<laughs> rock and roll. I'm thinking when, when you, you, you're a man who's been in, with, especially with Jerry Bruckheimer, you've yes. worked with him for a very long time, and I think your, your first film together was, what was your first film together? I think it was The Rock, actually. There you yeah. go, 94. Yeah, exactly. So that idea that you've known each other for a long time, but I'm guessing when you came to him and said, Jerry, I've got an idea for a movie. It's about gerbils who are super agents. Did he have security come, or did he, I don't know if he <laughs> thought maybe you were stoned? Or? He makes right. You know, one of the things when I came, I actually had it pretty well thought through. I had all the characters designed. You know, I had the, the scriptment, which was the outline of the story, and I actually had a one-minute teaser that showed what it would look like. Because you're absolutely right. When you talk about guinea pigs saving the world, they kind of, people roll their eyes, you know. But I think really what, what cinched the deal, it was, I think, um, having known him for that many years and him knowing me, there's a certain amount of, of trust that needs to go into something like this. Because this really is kind of off the wall and not at it is very atypical as a film you know in design and then I think also because it actually is based on certain factual information that's it's kind of astonishing the idea that animals and insects do actually work for the US government you know uh, if you Google let's say for instance squirrels in Iran you'll find that 12 squirrels were captured about three years ago in the Iranian embassy all of them equipped with video and audio equipment if you were to go to uh, DARPA.com, which is a public website of the U.S. government, in which you go into um, cyborgs, you'll find that there's a whole set of research that's going on right now. They're actually in the field. They take the pupa of larvae of um, moths and cockroaches, and they place nanotechnology into the brain stem, allowing them to be driven like RC cars and airplanes. And this is the God's honest truth. Wow. <laughs> but, but when it came to researching, I don't know how one even begins to think, well, okay, I'm going to make these gerbils come to life, and I've got to work in that sort of idea that they are kind of, you know, Mm -hmm. actors and they're going to do their, their thing. I don't know whether, I don't know if you talk to Richard Gere or whether you hang out with, <laughs> Rob Schneider looks kind of rodent-like. I don't know whether you talk to Rob Schneider about how does, how does one get to that place where you can think, I can do a movie just uh, with these four yeah. devils being stars. Well, I think it goes by the story and, and the characters. I mean, I think the characters work really well. They have their own little unique you know, niche in, in the story. And uh, once you start writing it and imagining it, it seems very straightforward to me to come up with an idea. And I do hope that you your son, Hoyt Yeatman Jr., the fourth. I know he's one of the voices of the mice. Yes. I know that uh, uh, John Favreau's little brat is another yes, voice. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly, Max. But yeah. uh, did they get a cut of this? I, I would hope that uh, he is. <laughs> I think there's a finder's fee at least of some sort coming yeah. into it. You know, I think his biggest thrill, he actually saw it only um, two, uh, two days ago, you know, with my wife. I didn't want to show it to him when it was in bits and pieces over the two years of production. He was thrilled. He really was, you know. And I think his biggest giggle was when he got to see his name go up in credits. I mean, 11 years old, how great is that, you know? <laughs> The, 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 um, the idea that you directed, this is your first feature, and, yes. and as I said, you've had a long history of, of major, major successes in the, in the visual mm -hmm. effects sort of side of it, and Oscar nominations and wins and all that. And uh, in 1994, you did direct before, you did a four-minute short called Asteroid Adventure. Yes. It's taken 15 years. How bad was Asteroid Adventure that it took 15 years <laughs> well, for you to get a feature film? Well, you know what? I've also done a lot of second unit directing. You know, in, right. in major motion pictures, second unit many times is where a lot of the bulk of the visual effects occur, so I've done a lot of that. And I also had a big commercial department where I've done commercials, too. So, um, in this case, it was a, a big leap, I mean, particularly a, a, a film of this scope and size, you know, it's actually a very big film. Um, and so, again, it takes trust, you know, and I knew going into it, if I wanted to direct a feature film, I'd have to come up with something that made it pretty special. So, by coming up with the story and the characters, I figured it was the only way in to start directing. Young Jerome Bruckheimer likes his sequels. I don't know whether you'd be ready for that or whether it's been already discussed. The idea, if this is successful, we'd go there If it's again successful, I would love to do a G4 show. There's a lot of ideas I still have for the characters. And, and the, 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 I don't know if you feel automatically that you've moved up the food chain. And this, uh, this sense that now that you've directed a film and you would be very well known in Hollywood, but there's a different kind of world you step into when you actually start directing. It is very different. Yeah, it's night and day between visual effects and directing. And you brought up a good point. I mean, really, you have to put the technology aside and just tell a good story. That's what the director's for. So so having the knowledge of visual effects only is a bonus because what it allows you to do is talk intelligently with the crew around you as to how you want to get your idea across. So it's a plus, but it isn't exclusively why you're the director. You have to be able to tell a good story. Last thing, I need Penelope Cruz's mobile number. Do you have her cell number? <laughs> I don't have her Maybe number. Maybe have the camera. You can, you <laughs> okay, can there you go. Rock and roll. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you very much.